but it could have been an awesome song. I guess it's all right. Getting tricky with it would have been amazing, though. Here we go, final section of the unit. We're going to evaluate some trig functions. We're going to get tricky with it. I can't believe it took us this long to play that song. Uh, let's check it out. So you're going to need a uh, table and unit circle that we made as our application last section, or you can print one down below underneath the packets and whatnot. We're going to use that table this section. Let's get into it. Let's do it here. Uh, boom, there it is. So this is the table I'm talking about. So we had to fill this out. I think I gave you the first quadrant. You had to fill out the rest of it. How do we use this table here? Well, what we're going to do, this only works for exact values. So when we want to find the exact values, I don't want to put in your calculator. You put this in your calculator, you're going to get some crazy decimals. We have these special right triangles that we've been working on that make exact values. That's why they're here. Let's see why they're so special. Okay, so let's take cosine 150. So how do I read this? Well, you go to your chart and say where is 150 degrees. You come on over and you go to you get to the cosine part of it here. If you want, bring your finger down the table and show that. And what do we have here? This is going to be negative radical 3 over 2. So that is the exact value. If I put that in my calculator, I get this crazy decimal. Don't want the decimal. I want this radical 3 over 2. All right, next one. How about cosecant of 2 pi over 3? So now we're in radians. So we'll go down the radians category. Find that angle 2 pi over 3. Here it is right here. And I'm going to go until I hit cosecant. So keep coming, keep coming. There is cosecant. Then bring your finger down here, trace it down here. And what angle am I pointing at here? This is going to equal 2 radical 3 over 3. So that is the exact value of that angle. Love it. All right, next one, the tan of negative 270. So I went ahead and put negative degrees in here, too. I thought of everything. Here's negative 270 right here. I'm going to bring it on back until I hit tangent. There's tangent. Slide it on down here so I know where they cross. Boom, undefined. So we're going to put undefined right up here. And that is the tangent of negative 270. One more of these bad boys. So let's do 405 degrees. So is 405 on our chart? No, it's not on our chart here. So what are we going to do? Well, we have to make it between 0 and 360. My table only goes from 0 to 360. So if we try to find that coterminal angle, subtract it, what do you get here? 45. This is the same thing as saying what is the sine of 45 degrees. Then we go over to our table. I love it. Put your finger on. I think this time I'm going to use a different finger. Uh, yes, I'm a Bengals fan. Let's bring out the number one fan. 45 degrees all the way out here till I hit the sign. Bring this bad boy down here. And then now I can see what the answer is. Like radical 2 over 2. So there we go. That's finding exact values on the table. This should be pretty easy peasy. Just follow it. Uh, the angle tells you the exact trig ratio. Awesome. How about in the calculator? It gets a little more uh, challenging here. Let's step it up. So grab your calculator, cosine of 150. Same problem as I did before, but now I don't want that exact value. I want an approximation. This calculator makes a pretty good approximation. Uh, I'm going to do cosine of 150, type it in, and we're going to round to the nearest hundred. So um, if I wanted that exact value, boom, there it is. But I'm going to round that to negative 0 0.87. So that is the approximate value of cosine 150. That's that same thing as we had in the last slide, um, that radical 3 over 2. If you divide that bad boy out, that's what you're going to end up with. Awesome. How about cosecant? So I go to my calculator, type in cosecant. If you have one of the newer, like 89s or something, it's going to have a cosecant button. Notice I do not have a cosecant button. That is a bummer. Oops. But that's OK. We can go, still go ahead and find cosecant. What is cosecant? Remember, cosecant is 1 over sine. So I'm really looking at what is the 1 over sine of 170. So again, I can type that in the calculator. It's just 1 divided by the sine of 170 degrees and hit enter. And this is what I'm looking at here. Boom. So I've got something like this. Let me shrink that a little bit. And again, I'm going to have to approximate a little bit here. The exact value would be 5.76. So this is the approximate value of the cosecant of 170. Excellent. How about cotangent of 5 pi over 6? Uh, again, that one's on the chart, but I don't want to use the chart. I want the approximate value. So I'm going to do this. Be careful because this is in radians, so I'm going to have to change my mode over. you got to come over here, change your mode, and I'm going to say what? Cotangent is, remember, 1 over tangent. I'm going to have that 5 pi over 6. And a lot of times we're going to put these in parentheses, so you know that's the whole angle here. Uh, some rough looking parentheses there. And what is this going to equal? We're going to say whew, 1 
1 divided by the tangent of uh, 5 pi divided by 6. And we're looking at negative 1.732. So negative 1.73 is what we'll round that to. Awesome. Fantastic. And then the last one, uh, secant members 1 over cosine. The thing I threw this one is here, I want to make sure you switch back. Change that mode back to degrees. So you kind of have to toggle back and forth here. Uh, 1 over, what was that? Secant is cosine, and that's 210. We're looking at negative 1.15. Uh, so negative 1.15. Boom. So those are the trig ratios. Approximate them, round them to the hundredths. Calculator's good to go. Excellent. So let's bring it to the next level here. Now we're going to bring it back. What if I don't know the angle? So I was saying, what's cosine of 150? You would tell me the ratio. What if I know the ratio? I don't know the angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this theta. Uh, between 0 and 360 and we're going to go back to our table so this time I'm instead of starting with the angle I don't know what the angle is I'm starting with the cosine and cosine is one half so I'm gonna go down here oh there's one half take your finger trace it over there's 60 awesome check this out though what if I would have kept going down this cosine angle what happens here all the way down here there's another one half bring your finger across oh look at that we're looking at 300 so what do I got to do here? This is actually has two answers. It could either be 60 degrees or 300 degrees. So either one of these is going to give you that cosine of one half. Crazy time. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Tangent of some angle, I don't know what the angle is, gives me negative radical 3. I need to find that angle. So I'm going to scroll down this tangent one until I hit, oh, there's radical 3, but he's not negative. Here he's negative. Then I'm going to slide my finger over here. Boom, 120. Uh, that's great. That's half of it. Remember, it's going to happen twice, so let's keep on going down here. Uh, there's the other negative radical 3, and then boom, I'm going to bring this. Why? I guess I'm using out the broken finger now. Uh, he had some issues with his table. Excellent. So what are my two answers here? We are looking at 120 and 300 degrees. Fan. Fantastic. So now we're using table, finding theta between this, you're going to get two answers. So again, table, not too bad. I like the table. I'm just running my finger along it, no problems, good to go. How about the calculator? This is where it gets a bit tricky now. So get tricky with it. Get tricky with it. Here we go. We're going to use the same ideas. I don't know the angle, but I know the trig ratio. So how do I do it? Well, I'm going to go to my calculator, and this is called inverse trig. So we're undoing trig functions. Just like if you have like x squared and you want to get rid of that squared, what do you do? You square root it. They're opposites. They're inverse functions. If I'm going to uh, find out what cosine is, I'm going to say I'm going to inverse cosine it. So I'm going to inverse cosine uh, this ratio right here. So it looks something like this. So to get rid of this cosine like we square root a square, you are going to inverse cosine this actual angle here. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So it's this cosine to a negative 1, and that's 2.079. And what happens here is this cancels out that. I'm left with just plain old theta. So I'm looking at what angle is the the angle theta is equal to this inverse cosine. Is that on my calculator? Sure, above cosine, look at it. There it is. There's the inverse. And Mr. Bean's going to talk a lot, lot, lot more about these. You know how he gets rolling about these things. Inverse cosine of 0 0.2079. And hit enter. Oh, check that out. What did I get there? 78 degrees. So a 78 degree is going to give me that uh, 0.2079. Hold on, though. Remember last time I had two answers? you're going to get two answers again. So how do I do that? Well, you got to think to our unit circle, all about this unit circle. If I've got this 78 degree angle here, and I'm thinking cosine, and it's a positive ratio, where else is cosine positive? Well, I've got the 78 degree angle, cosine is positive, boom, in the fourth quadrant. Remember, it's a plus minus quadrant. So if this is 78 above, this is 78 below. So what is 78? Uh, degrees below this 360, well, it's just subtract them. You're going to take your 360 minus that 78 from it. And what are you going to end up with? We're going to end up with 2, not 80, 2, 82. Whoa. <laughs> 
Let's try that. And what's good about this is I can always check it. Take a second to see if you're right. What is the cosine of 282? Boom, there it is. And I rounded a little bit here um, because this was actually 78.0068. So it's going to be super, super close. So again, this has two answers, 78 and 282. All right, here we go. Let's look at cosecant theta here. So I know the trig ratio that cosecant theta equals. So if I was solving this, um, ideally, I would just like to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the inverse cosecant of this, what, negative 1.2062, and I'm good to go. I'd go over my calculator. Whoa, what is that? Let's clear that out. And what's going to happen? I would do inverse cosecant. Wait a minute, there's not a cosecant button. Unless you got like a TI-89 or some maybe some of these newer calculators, we don't have that cosecant button, so we can't inverse cosecant it. So what do we got to do? A little bit different here. Let's start over. If I went to the beginning, I could say cosecant is really what? I know it relates to sine. What if I did this? If I put 1 over cosecant and 1 over this, whatever you do to one side, you got to do it to the other. I'm essentially doing what? I'm taking the reciprocal of both sides. You can do that. That would give you what then? That would be the sine. 1 over cosecant is 1 over 1 over sine, which is just sine. And then I've got this ratio right here. So now I'm good to go because there is a, um, oops, negative 1.2062. There is a sine button, obviously, on our calculator. So now I can say theta equals the inverse sine of 1 over negative 1.062. So I can do it uh, now. Let's go inverse sine and it's 1 over negative 1.062 oops I forgot the decimal you're gonna need that decimal that would be a very very different number uh, let's try that right there and I'm looking at negative 56 negative 56 degrees and again this is between 0 and 360 so right off the bat I see that negative 56 I'm going to add 360 degrees to it so I'm going to say 360 degrees. Um, when I add 360 to that, what is that? That's like saying 304 degrees. So 304 degrees is the first angle. So that's great. But now i got to draw my unit circle and say, OK, 304 is really down here in the fourth quadrant. I'm looking at something like this. And 304 obviously is minus 56 below. So there's that reference angle. I'm thinking, all right, where else is cosecant or sine negative? So definitely negative down here in the fourth quadrant. Where else? It's going to be over here in the third quadrant. So I want to draw 56 degrees below 180. So add those bad boys together, 180, and that is going to be what? It should be 236. So I'm looking at 304 and 236. And here are my two angles. And then I'm going to double check it just to make sure. Is it really, uh, let's clear this out, 236. So I'm going to say, remember, to check it, cosecant is 1 over sine. And it's 1 over sine of, what did I say, 236. Hit enter, negative 1.262. And it's a little bit off because of rounding and things like that. Woo, a lot of work there. I like it. Excellent. Cotangent, so I threw another tough one. Remember, cotangent's really uh, 1 over tangent, so we can't inverse this we're saying what angle anytime you're looking for an angle it's inverse so we're going to inverse tangent but because we did that it's 1 over 1.42 so let's put that bad boy in here we've got inverse tangent of 1 over 1.42 and check this one out I'm going to bring this one onto the screen so we can look at it a little bit uh, it's this one's not friendly it's 35.15 degrees again we're going to round to the nearest hundredth so I made this other one work out nice and neat for us, but we're going to have to tweak that a little bit. Uh, notice this one worked out, these first two worked out friendly. This one is going to have a little decimal in there, but that's okay. We got this, no problem. Think about where this 35 is on your unit circle. We've got a 35.15 degree over here. Where else is tangent going to have the same sign? Tangent is positive in this quadrant. Where else is it positive? Well, it's in the where the sign's the same, the negative, negative. And here's what's nice about tangent. It's straight across. So what I got to do, I just got to add 180 to it. Or you can think about it, this is 35.15 degrees below 180. So add 180 to it, you're going to end up with 215.15 degrees. Hoo -hoo -hoo, wow. That's going to take some time. That's going to take some practice. Uh, but we actually are going to use that. Mr. Sullivan's going to teach us some solving trig equations. Uh, and you're going to be happy you had it. 
I just want to practice the calculator. I feel like the table's probably pretty good. Uh, this is all calculator. Try it. See how you do. Good luck. All right, here we go. Let's take a, just double check these first couple answers here. So the first one, I got this. The second one, remember, was 1 over the sine of 128. And that's 1 over tangent. So that's just kind of plug and chug, find those ratios. Uh, hopefully not too bad. This is where I think it gets tricky, so I went ahead and started it. You know, do your inverse cosine, you get 148 degrees. You got to think about where else is cosine negative. Remember, this is the negative. This is uh, the trig ratio, so it happens down here. So 148 is what? That's like 32 degrees shy of 180. So you got to add that 32, get that reference angle, add it to it, add that to uh, 180. What do you get? You get 212. So that should be 212 degrees. So it's both of these. Remember, two answers. Excellent. Cosecant's tricky because there's no inverse cosecant button. Our life would be so much easier with that button. But we're going to do inverse sine. But you can't just use that ratio. It's 1 over to get it back into sine. I got 44.37 degrees. And now I'm thinking about where else is sine uh, positive. So sine is going to be positive in the second quadrant. So I'm looking over this. So the calculator is only going to give you one of them you got to find the other one. So if that's 44.37, that's going to be 44.37 shy of 180. So I'm going to take 180 minus 44.37. Ooh, it's late at night. Let's see if Mr. Bruce can get this right. Uh, so we're going to say, what, 135 point, is that a 3? I can't read my own writing. I think that's a 3. So that'll be 6, 3 degrees. So... It's kind of late. Mr. Bruss is tired. Did he get it right? I don't know. I'm going to check it. So let's check it out. See what happens. I want to say, is that the cosecant? So that's going to be 1 divided by the sine of 135.63. And I got 1.43. And with rounding, yes, that looks good. Well played, Mr. Bruss. Well played. And then the finale, I kind of threw one out here at you. Uh, the inverse sine of one point. Two. Did you notice anything weird about this? Did you try this? You go inverse sine of 1.2. Uh, oh, we've got an issue. We've got a domain error. What happens here? This is impossible. So this is no solution. Why can't this happen? Remember, our trig ratios are always less than one uh, sine for sine and cosine and tangent. Remember, uh, if this is opposite over adjacent, something like this, what's going to happen? This is the hypotenuse always has to be bigger than these two sides. So for sine and cosine, all your values are less than 1. But tangents don't follow that rule. Remember, 3 fourths, so tangents, no worries. But a sine and cosine, uh, that's going to give you issues here. Excellent. That is it. That is my last section of the year. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you pass this master check and do well on the, jet, on the test. Good luck. Peace out. I forgot the unit circle reads and degrees. I forgot to study in my eights with no degrees. I forgot the top half goes from zero out to pi. I forgot it all and that's no lie. Think it goes like pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six pi. A radians an angle and a radius is a line in it. You study every day, you'll do just fine. I forgot the unit circle, trigonometry, sine, cosine, and tangent, and those trig identities. I forgot the lower half goes from pi till two pi. I forgot it all, and that's no lie. Then it goes like seven pi over six, hey, five pi over four, hey. Circles in your mind. Hooray!